What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So, if I was starting the collection over, what 10 designers would I want to start with first? Not the only 10 I'm going to get, but the first 10. We've covered Niche, we've covered Cheapy, we've covered the clones. The last of the Mohicans is the designer category. Arguably, my favorite category. I'm through and through a designer fragrance guy, though I appreciate all levels, qualities, olfactive experiences and price points when it comes to fragrance. I just love the variety and new experiences. I wear designers quite a bit. I'm kind of known as more of a designer guy, blue fragrance guy, and so on. And some of these 10 may surprise you and some of these absolutely will not. But if I'm starting over, starting from scratch, knowing what I know now, and I'm only getting 10 designers just to start the collection, it's going to be these 10. Let's talk about them. Stay tuned. One that should come as no surprise is Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Beau, Le Parfum. Huge, huge, huge. Did I mention huge? Fan of this. Huge, huge people. Love this fragrance. So, juicy fruit, coconut, tropical, pineapple smell, fresh green, sweet powdery tonka bean, soapy floral. That's pretty much the way it, it kind of develops for me, but... This is the most beachy sweet fragrance I think I've ever worn in the summer. Because it's surprisingly sweet, but it's juicy fruit tropical. It smells like a beach vibe. I've worn it having, you know, blackened shrimp on the beach. Shout outs to Sharkies. Multiple times. Love wearing this. I've worn this one actually to the beach, aside from going have a meal and everything. It's such a vibe. It really fits it. It's almost like a fruity cocktail that you would typically drink on vacation. Without the booziness, but kind of like the just multitude of fruitiness and just that sweet pineapple smell is magnificent here. Performance is great. In my opinion, it was the best design release of 2022. Not always the easiest thing to find, but I would seek out a bottle. I would find it. Because if I was starting over and I'm grabbing some designers first, this might be the first one I reach for. Because honestly, when I was gathering the fragrances, it's the first one I grabbed. Le Beau Le Parfum, Jean-Paul Gaultier. It still surprises me that I enjoy this one just so much because it got a lot of flack online and I just don't get it because I think One Million Parfum is one of the best they've ever released from the house. So you get a little bit of a beachy vibe, still has that bubblegummy sweetness that it's known for, thick creamy tuberose smell, but it kind of has that standing on the sand by the beach kind of vibe to the aroma. I think there's solar notes or something, but that creamy tuberose, it might, you know, some people may think, oh God, that's probably terrible. And some people do feel that way, I think. But, damn it if it ain't good. One million, one million's DNA, that sweet bubble gum, slightly cinnamon spiced, even though I don't even think they list the cinnamon, mixed with a creamy tuberose. You wouldn't think it would work. But it works, and it's a great performer, as are most in the line. For being as sweet as it is, I mean, we really went with two back-to-back -back summery sweet fragrances. Kind of weird, because... This does work in the summertime. I mean, I wore it through this past summer a few times. Big, big fan of this one. It's up there with 1 million Privé for me personally. I actually like this one more than 1 million Lucky, which for some of you, you probably went, what? How could you like that more than Lucky? It's a taste thing. I don't know what to tell you. I love Lucky. I like this a little bit more. And that's why I would like to grab one of the 1 millions in this first 10. And for me, it's going to be 1 million Parfum. Now, not everything's going to be a sweet designer. Some of this stuff's going to be on the fresher side, and I've raved about this one this year. It's the most wearable in the line. Big fan of the whole line of Brioni Eau de Parfum fragrances, but Brioni Eau de Parfum Eclat, this is the one. This is definitely the one. It's not the one I've rated the highest, but it's the one I've worn the most. Great atomizer. Beautiful bottle. Beautiful, sharp grapefruit, fresh ambroxan, vibrant pink pepper smell. I don't know why the focus is off. Let me bring that focus back. There we go. With a smoky olibanum 
and a dense musky smell. Like there's actually some depth to this one for being fresh. I put it in a similar category to Terre d'Hermes Eau Givre without smelling exactly like it. This is actually a little bit deeper fragrance than that. It still has that everyday professional appeal of the original Eau de Parfum, just fresher overall, more airy, doesn't really sacrifice much in performance here. Six to eight hour fragrance easily on skin. This is just really, really good stuff and more people need to give it a chance. Some of you may not be surprised to see this, but yeah, if I'm grabbing 10 designers right away, Brioni Eau de Parfum Eclat is definitely going to be one of the absolute first. Now, we went over grabbing what I think was the best designer release of 2022, and for me, I'm going to grab what I feel is the best designer release of 2023 with Spice Bomb Infrared Eau de Parfum I absolutely adore this. Not everybody's going to agree with me that it's the best because it's a it's a taste and opinion thing. I really love this. I think it couldn't have been better. It's resinous, it's leathery, it's smoky, and it's fiery hot. Red's a good color. It is red hot spice. I love to smell this. You don't realize how playfully sweet the Eau de Toilette is until you smell it next to the Eau de Parfum. And the Eau de Toilette's phenomenal. I still smell it floating around in the air. There's still a little bit of sweetness here left from the Eau de Toilette, but it's not the same. It's, it doesn't have the red berries. I get a little hint of it, but not the same at all. Uh, more about, like, like I said, smoky resins and leather. It's a more mature, refined take. It's not as loud, but it does last a really long time, and it really radiates off of the skin. Nice, consistent scent bubble that's not going to overwhelm anyone. This is, this is a sexy fragrance. It just is. I would absolutely have to grab this as one of the first designers I pick up. If you haven't smelled this one yet, do yourself a favor. Do me a favor by doing yourself a favor and get your nose on Spice Bomb Infrared Eau de Parfum. Now this one might be a bit out of left field for you guys. So I do love Embroxin. I do. I like Embroxin fragrances. I'm a blue fragrance kind of guy. But I really think this is better than Sauvage. I really do. It's tropical Sauvage is how I look at it. It's Jasada Ambassador, the original. This is good stuff, guys. It's all of the spice, metallic tone, shower gel, feel, and performance of Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette plus a mango. Tropical fruits. It's great. If you like Dior Sauvage, you will like this. I can't imagine you not liking it. It's so good. I would take this over Sauvage every time. I would even take this over Prada Luna Rosa Carbon, which some of you went, oh, you gasped because you're such a fan of the lavender of that. I get it. I think Prada Luna Rosa Carbon is a little bit better, too, because of the lavender. I'm assuming we're thinking the same here. Um, it's an assumption. I might have made an ass out of you and me. You never know. But if you haven't tried this one and you like Embroxin fragrances, you're missing out. It's that good. It is that good. smells nothing like the Intense, because I know somebody's going to ask. Yes, the Intense will remind you of Sauvage Elixir. Still, pretty different fragrance. They go their separate ways pretty quickly. Uh, but both Jasada fragrances, as far as Ambassador, both really, really good. Don't believe the negative anonymous trolling, and don't just believe super hype. Get your nose on them. Because, I mean, hell, if I'm starting over and I'm getting 10 designers, I'm getting this over Dior Sauvage, because I like it that much. It's Jasada Ambassador, the original. Now, even though this isn't technically my number one in the line, I think Absolutely is the king of the Stronger With You mountain. This year's release of Stronger With You Amber has just been so enjoyable for me personally. Hot, spicy, floral, sweet, and aromatic. Warm and ambery, as you would expect. The note breakdown doesn't tell the entire tale. Uh, if I remember correctly, this was a tester. No. It's not. I thought it had the note breakdown on it somewhere, but it's like lavender, amber, and vanilla. I think it's note breakdown. It's definitely got a white floral smell, like a little bit of that instant crush smell at the top, plus a lot of like cinnamon spice, real hot spice. And then it dries down into an amber vanilla, as you would expect, but beautiful stuff. <sighs> Such a good fragrance. Uh, there's, there's no misses in this line. They didn't miss anywhere. I would say my least favorite is Stronger With You Only. And that's really good. It smells like a slightly fresher Strong With You. Without smelling exactly like Strong With You Freeze, they're actually not as redundant to each other as you would think. But this is good stuff. This needs to be given a chance. Yes, absolutely is the, the greatest. Intensely is phenomenal. They're all good. 
If you like one of them, you'll probably like them all, if not the majority. And this one's a little slept on. It's a release for this year, and I, it's one of my favorite designer releases of the year. So naturally, it's going to be one of the ones I want to start with. It's Emporio Armani, Strong With You, Amber. Now, I did briefly mention how I'm into blue fragrances, and I didn't want to litter this with blue fragrances. As long as I get the blue fragrance, I said the blue fragrance that way for a very specific reason, because I think it's the best blue fragrance. Gotta get Blue de Chanel Parfum. Yeah, it's a, again, taste kind of thing. Some people, their number one's the Eau de Parfum, or they love the Eau de Toilette, or they just can't stand Blue de Chanel. They don't get it. To each their own, but for me, till further notice, I think it's the best blue fragrance to ever come out. Let me get that focus back. I don't know why the autofocus is getting stuck today for this video. Kind of weird. Nothing weird about this scent. And I'm typically not an icy super kind of guy. It kind of grew on me, I guess, but there's a warm, soft, woody feel to this. You got cashmere wood, which is a synthetic. You have icy super synthetic. You have cedar wood. You have sandalwood. With a little bit of a citrus feel at the top, it's almost like a resinous, woodsy type of smell. It's warm, rich, thick, not a loud fragrance, but lasts a really long time. It's very professional and clean. I think it's a great fragrance. Like I said, it's my favorite blue. I think it's the best blue. And if I could only have one blue, it's Blue de Chanel Parfum. So naturally, I got to start with that if I'm grabbing some designers, right? Right. Okay. So if you haven't smelled this yet, take my word for it. Get out there and spray it. It's most you know, department stores, your Sephora's, Ulta's, Macy's and all, they'll have it. Get it on skin and thank me later. Blue de Chanel Parfum. This next one stands to surprise a few of you because it might just be me. It does smell very similar to YSLYEDT. It's a little bit more salty, a little bit more watery, but it's Artisan Teal from John Barbados. Technically XX Artisan Teal. I think it's great and you can get it for like 39 bucks, 36 bucks, something like that, right under 40, right around 40 for a 4.2 ounce. Like a five hour fragrance, nothing crazy in performance. It's what you've come to expect, most people anyways, from fresh John Barbados fragrances, but this is like my favorite. I like it more than Artisan Pure. For spring, I'm still an Artisan Blue guy, but warmer weather, it's Artisan Teal. It's so good. There's a water lily note that provides that watery facet, that aquatic tone with this iodine heavy sea salt accord that ties in with musk. It's a little fruity. It's citric. It's so fresh, so inviting. Clean everyday wear. I've never gotten a compliment with it, but a DNA like this, I'm sure the probability is much higher than most people would think. I just personally haven't gotten a compliment outside of my wife with this one because I know somebody's going to add just to get compliments, bro. Everybody's situation is different, but I know it smells great. It's super cheap because, I mean, for this fragrance for 4.2 ounces to get like 36 to 40 dollars i think that's super cheap personally designer level stuff doesn't smell super cheap and synthetic just smells really really good i would want to start with this one probably surprised a lot of you but john barbados artisan teal these last two are some more 2023 releases because it's been a great year for designer releases i think so naturally some of the newer ones are going to be what i want to start with first because i'm still getting to know a lot of these because they're new to my collection, like Invictus Victory Elixir. This is a beautiful, warm, ambery, dark, smoky vanilla. Resinous feeling, a little earthy even. This is, oh man, this is good. Oh my God, this is good. This is so, and look, I really liked Platinum. I like Victory. That's their two previous releases before this. Blows them out the water barely like you gotta like make your mind play tricks on you to try to tie it to the Invictus DNA victory ties to the DNA more than the elixir and platinum ties to it very well but this not so much Invictus smelling which I could could be a good thing for some of you I'm sure but banger oh so good so good I would have to add this one and some of you might be like I can't believe you're not going with Invictus Aqua 2018 your favorite I've got so many Invictus Aqua smelling fragrances that because the price skyrocketed on it, 
I have two bottles, don't get me wrong, but I don't think, if I had to start over, I don't think I would necessarily have to seek it out, at least not right away, because there's so many other ways for me to smell almost exactly like it, or very, very close to, whereas with this, if I'm, you know, starting with 10 fresh designers, I want the newest in the Invictus line, because it is that good. It warrants the attention. I'm not saying I like it more than Invictus Aqua 2018. I'm just saying for the situation, yeah, and it's a phenomenal performer. I know that matters to a lot of you. One of the ten I'd have to grab first, Invictus Victory Elixir from Paco Rabanne. And the last one is, again, another 2023 release that's sneaky good. Doesn't get enough credit. At least I don't think so, anyways. Issy Miyake, Low Dissy, Pour Ohm, Vetiver. Watery, Freshwater Accord, Sweet Geranium, Earthy Vetiver. Very woodsy. It's that simple. It sounds simple. It smells simple. But it smells great and simple. Easy, easy to wear. Easy to like, not too earthy, not real dirty, soil-heavy feel but a little bit of earthiness. It's that geranium note that I think most people may have a challenge with because it's distinctive. It's more of a sweet geranium than a minty geranium. So you'd have to smell it to really understand where I'm coming from. You'd be like, oh, that's that sweetness. Yeah, it's more of a floral, slightly earthy, sweet fragrance, watery and woodsy, great everyday wear, a little different from everything else without being some challenging fragrance quietly one of the best designer releases of 2023 in my opinion this was such a pleasant surprise there were several viewers months and months and months ago that recommended you should give this a try since you're coming around to vetiver and those of you that said that if you're seeing this now you know who you are thank you you were absolutely right and i have since tried to put my seal of approval and stamp on it on go try this it's not crazy expensive it's right around 50 ish dollars for a brand new release that's a great versatile everyday work wear. If you like Issy fragrances, you'll probably like this. Uh, it doesn't veer too far away from Lodissi's DNA, though it's not all that green like the original. You do smell elements of it here. Just a great release. I would definitely want to start with this. This is the first Issy fragrance I would think of because I think it's one of the better releases of the year. It's Lodissi Port Home Vetiver from Issy Miyake. Well, that's the 10. Some of them I know surprised some of you and some of them you expected to see. And until next time, do me a real quick favor, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate all the feedback. And I love hearing from you guys. If you had to start over and you're just grabbing some designers first, which designers would be those automatic buying these? Definitely gotta have these first. Again, it's not gonna be the only designers you have. It's just the first ones that you're gonna start your collection with. Definitely comment down below and let me know. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the 10 that I would start with and you give them a spray now, you might end up thanking me later. Have a good one, guys.